and then they restricted them to 1,570 calories. Think about that number for a second. 1,570 calories is what a lot of people would consider a healthy diet, a healthy deficit, uh, something that is great for weight loss. This was considered starving, and in my book, it is starving still. So I, at my time, when I was an aspiring fruitarian, I probably barely got this amount of calories um, from the fruit that I was having and the juice that I was having because I didn't add any sugar to it. And then I would make these like pathetic salads that was cucumbers <laughs> and uh, a few peppers and put put a little pepper on it and a few dates. The dates is what helped me ultimately. Um, and a little bit of vinegar, like it was, like I said, pathetic. So anyways, they would be limited to two meals a day and they were on a rotation of the same three meals for six months. Um, and at one point during the experiment, this is from a first hand account of a gentleman who went through this. By the way, he was 23 years old when he did this experiment, so he was very young. Um, so imagine what the metabolic damage and recovery that you've done decades older than him, because I'm 35 in a month. They were fairly active during this and they were told to stay active on a 1,570 calorie diet, which is mimicking what people think is healthy to work out and do cardio and do hit and do CrossFit or whatever the heck it is that you do and be in a calorie deficit. Like this was low mood, uh, low libido, had no interest in women, had like no interest in life, just barely could make time for the people that visited them. They got really uh, toxic and like angry and short tempered with each other. Uh, they were monitored throughout the entire thing, like very strictly in six months of starving at 1500 calories, which is, I can't stress enough how many people eat that much in a day and consider it normal. It's not normal. These, these men uh, f were eating 3000 plus calories and they were lean and fit individuals. So one guy went on a walk and he just broke. He ended up just getting banana splits and uh, malt and root beers and went to another store and got another ice cream and he came back and admitted it. He thought I gotta tell the truth. And from then on they created a buddy system that you couldn't leave the premises without a buddy just so that you could reinforce that you can't eat anything out there. So that's that's most people I would say. Most people that are eating in a calorie deficit are out there just going Oh, I wish I could just, I would, I would do anything to eat that. <laughs> I would, I would do anything to eat that, man. And it's, it's, it's a hard place to be. That's a, it's a really hard place to be in your mind. <laughs> it's not funny. I'm sorry, but it's just, I, I can laugh because I've been there. I've been at that point where I'm just like anything. I'll do anything. Please just give me something. Um, I'm so, so frail, so starved so sad so miserable so unable to think clearly so in any case i'm gonna like have some notes here that i'm looking at because i really want people to hear what's going on with their metabolism since they've changed from a restrictive diet like keto like carnivore like intermittent fasting like fruitarian like raw vegan all of these are very restrictive diets and you usually don't get enough calories or you get too much of the calories that you don't necessarily need and your body just stores as excess fat. So these people had constant fatigue, cold intolerance, weakness, food obsession, binge urges, emotional instability, hormonal suppression, your thyroid, sex hormones and leptin, decreased muscle mass and organ size, and slowed heart rate, reduced VO2 max, and impaired physical performance. So these are clear signs of adaptive thermogenesis. The body is protecting itself by down-regulating energy output during caloric deprivation. So once eating resumed, this is what happened. Carbohydrates played a key role in restoring glycogen, your thyroid hormone function, and mental well-being. Refeeding had to be done with sufficient volume and energy or recovery was delayed. Let me say that one more time. 
refeeding had to be done with sufficient volume and energy or recovery was delayed. So through my experience, I'm realizing that I'm telling you guys to eat in a surplus because I am also in metabolic recovery. I am recovering from the years of bad eating that I put myself through. So I'm saying eat enough, eat 3000 calories. I know men that are eating 4,000, 5,000 calories, but I finally feel after doing some research and listening to my own sort of signaling that like, okay, I think I've been refeeding now for years and I'm finally giving the body what it really wants, a high carbohydrate, low fat diet that I might be at the point where I can sort of regulate and just be like, eat when I'm hungry and not just eat because I need to get those calories in. I need to get that energy into my body so that it can understand and it can signal that we are in the right environment now. Because for a long time, my body just went, I have no idea when I'm gonna get food again or if it's gonna be the right amount. So I'm gonna store this as much as I can. So it's really important that you refeed, especially if you haven't been eating enough. And maybe that's why so many overweight people are having a lot of success in dropping the first 20 pounds is because they've got enough fat stored on their body that it can be converted into energy. Something to think about. Why refueling the body is non-negotiable. This is a non-negotiable thing. You really need to get that in your mind and I had to get past it too. So you need to re-feed the body what it properly needs and wants. You should be restoring glycogen in your muscles and liver. This is after reversing from survival mode, okay? Raise the leptin and insulin. These signal safety in the body. Reactivate your thyroid, particularly T3. Provide substrate for tissue and organ repair. Normalize hunger, temperature, mood, and metabolism. It's not about just eating more. It's about building back that metabolic fire to fuel your body as it's designed to run on carbohydrates. The mental challenge of temporary fat gain. Now, I've been through this rebounding phase. I definitely needed to gain weight since at one point I was 114 pounds. That is what I weighed when I was like 12. During this phase, some pe people experience a little bit of fat gain. So this is the retaining of water. This is a little bit of fat, like, oh no, the starch is stalling me. This is all of you guys that are having this sort of like, ah, I've done so many horrible things to my body and then it should just respond really well now after everything I've done without really thinking about what kind of state your metabolism is in. And it's not just going to change overnight because you've changed your mind about what you wanna eat. So you are going to rebound with water and glycogen. One gram of glycogen stores is three grams of water. Rehydration is mistaken for fat gain. Hormonal restoration, leptin and insulin rise, encouraging some fat storage. This is short term. It is protective, not pathological. This is short term, it is protective, not pathological. You need to rebuild tissue. The body needs calories to rebuild damaged muscle, organs, hormones, skin, hair, and reproductive function. Digestive recovery, your gut lining, liver, kidneys, and pancreas all require energy to repair and function optimally again. You are rebuilding your house. You are the house, your body is the house. If your house is damaged by a fire, a famine, dieting, fasting, stress, you don't just paint the walls and say, oh, this looks really good. <laughs> you need to repair your foundation. You need to reinforce the plumbing, your hormones. You need to rewire the electricity, your nervous system, and you need to refill the pantry with glycogen and fat stores. This is why the temporary increase in your body fat or weight is part of the repair. It is not a setback. Homeostasis returns, okay? With consistent sufficient intake of high carb, low fat, whole plant foods, your thyroid T3 rises, your metabolism increases, body temperature normalizes, menstrual cycle returns and stabilizes, mood, focus, libido, and recovery improve, 
appetite and satiety regulate themselves. So this is where I'm at now is that that huge appetite that I had that I was just like, I got to eat everything in sight. I got to, I got to eat bowls and bowls of potatoes and rice. And I got to have huge smoothies with ad extra added sugar. I mean, this morning I still had three bananas with frozen mangoes and peaches and whatnot. And I added a hundred grams of sugar to it and I feel fantastic. That's a fabulous breakfast for me and it works very well. Love it. And I'm going to keep doing that. But it's the overeating to the point where I was so stuffed with the starches. That's something that I'm starting to regulate now. Your body starts to naturally recomp, shedding the excess fat more easily without force. <laughs> Your body finally trusts you again and you can let go of the fat that is no longer needed as protection. You can't heal a stressed and starved body by continuing to underfeed it. You must feed it, even when it feels counterintuitive. Temporary fat gain is not a step backward. It's your body rebuilding the very systems that you damaged by dieting. Once stable, you'll find that your weight, energy, and health settle into a much more natural resilient state without extreme, without stress, and without constant control. Now, I've been doing a lot of walking lately. I haven't been to the gym in about a week. But I know that if I did go to the gym and I did do heavy cardio, I would be eating more that day. And that's perfectly normal because that's what my body would want and need. Does that make sense? So if your energy output is like nil nothing, which I don't suggest, like you need to do something. You need to jump on a trampoline for 10 minutes. You need to stretch in your living room. Our bodies are meant to move. So please do something. But if you do nothing, you're still going to lose weight. You just won't have the fitness and you just won't have that lean muscle that you're looking for. But so another highlight on adaptive thermogenesis, body's ability to downregulate energy expenditure, AKA slow your metabolism down. This is the lowering of your resting metabolic rate. This is that where you, <laughs> if you just eat less and less, your body is in this storage mode and it's in this conservation mode and it kind of ignores other things to just keep you alive. It's very survival mode. It's very basic instinct. And I would bet most people kind of run on this. It's why people beeping their horn at each other. Like people get so mad so fast and so stressed so easily. It's, it's like, I get to watch the world in like such a different energetic perspective because I have enough, you know? And I can respond to things like much better in a much more chill state. That's where everybody should be, you know, in my opinion. The TV show, The Biggest Loser. Contestants were followed. And even after six years, most regained the weight and their slow metabolism persisted because they didn't eat enough. So the body, the body aggressively adapts to weight loss by conserving energy long term. So caloric restriction, weight loss, stress, and undernutrition, even after the dieting stops, it's not a permanent metabolism, it's a broken metabolism, and it's protective, it's reversible. So the point of this video is to let you know that your metabolism is probably in recovery. You've been doing this for six days. You've been doing this for six weeks. You've been doing this for a couple months at most, I guess, the sugar diet, because it really hasn't been mainstream for too long. And you're obsessed about the scale or you're like not trusting the process. You really don't even know how your body works. So you're just sort of going off of what everyone says. I'm here to sort of clear the air, let you know about your own metabolism and how it works. And I've been at this two years. I've been eating this way for two years. Gotten off coffee, gotten off meat, gotten off alcohol, in increased my fitness and I have better sleep. I drink more water. I eat more food than I ever have, and I'm very satiated every day. I never think like, oh, I wish I could eat something else. And I'm very active out there in the world, and I'm able to take the sun really well. It was kind of long. I'm just going to leave it there. 
If you have any more questions, uh, leave them down below and I will see you in the next one.